As more inventory comes on the market and we all adjust to this new normal, a new set of strategies and rules are going to apply. I wanna talk about five things that you absolutely should not say when you're shopping for a home in this market and I'm gonna start right now. Hey guys, Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International coming to you with another video. This time we're talking home buying strategy. More specifically, five things that you shouldn't say when you're shopping for your home. Now I know that sounds weird because we're doing the social distance thing and who's gonna hear you anyways, right? Well, at some point, we are going to find ourselves probably back in an open house world, even if it's limited and uh, even in the meantime during a private showing you might run into a neighbor who's someone's best friend or uh, you might encounter the listing agent or honestly uh, because of all the security systems you might have a microphone in the house somewhere now note that has to be disclosed and there should be a sign on the door but it gets missed all the time so either way you want to watch what you say because it does tee up the uh, negotiation down the road for a positive or a negative way and we're going to talk about how to avoid those negatives if you get value out of this video please give me a thumbs up uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video and what i could uh, have included on this list and subscribe to the channel because i am going to continue to put out weekly content just like this that you're not going to want to miss so let's get into it the first thing you want to avoid saying or talking about is that the decor or the staging sucks. Now, I have two reasons for that. Number one is obviously it's very personal choice when it's someone's house or the agent's advice relative to getting the house ready and you're going to offend someone. You don't want to start a negotiation off on the negative foot because it just brings a little bit of a negative energy and it could come back to bite you down the road. The second reason you shouldn't talk about this out loud to anybody is it's your secret weapon. If you think the staging sucks, someone else is probably gonna feel the same way. And if they overhear you, they might think, oh yeah, it's just the staging or it's just the paint. I could just change that. And you've now lost a strategic advantage. In fact, if the pictures are ugly, if the wall color is weird, that is an opportunity for you because other people are gonna see that but not realize it and if you point it out to them, you may have just given away your secret uh, and you gained yourself some competition on the house. So keep it to yourself, talk about what you're gonna do when you buy it after the fact, uh, but just, just don't say it out loud. Number two, now the second thing you don't wanna say here is this is my dream home. Why? Well, for the very obvious reason that it gives the other person the indication that you really, really want the home. It's your, it's your dream house, it's your number one choice. Now you've lost some of your leverage in a negotiation. If they know that you really want it, they can lean on you a little harder than they might otherwise be able to if they didn't know that you liked it that much. Uh, you simply just don't want to tilt your hand in any way uh, because it will potentially cost you some money down the road and probably make it a little more expensive to actually get into the house. Also, if there's a negotiation point and something comes up that you want the seller to fix but they know it's your dream house, they might push back and say, hey, you deal with it. It's your, it's your dream house, you know. Um, you take on that $5,000 repair. Again, just cost you some money. Just keep that to yourself. You wanna tell them you like the house and just leave it at that. So this third one has more to do with an open house scenario, but uh, hear me out on this. Uh, you don't wanna start talking about permits, the legality of something, the quality of something, uh, pointing out defects uh, in front of a lot of other people. Why? Um, well, in a normal open house scenario, that seller is going to remember you as the picky buyer, the nosy buyer who either made them uncomfortable in front of other attendees or the person who's just going to nitpick the entire transaction apart. And they're going to relay that to the seller. Uh, you've just gained yourself a reputation as the person who's going to be challenging to deal with. Keep that stuff to yourself, talk to your buyer's agent, read the inspections and reports, come back privately, um, but just don't bring it up in front of everybody because it just frankly causes a bit of a scene 
and it leaves the listing agent or the seller thinking you are going to be challenging. All right, so number four is to never ask the seller or the listing agent why they're selling. Like I said, we're in a new market. A lot of people have uh, lost their retirement or lost savings or lost jobs or lost family members and they're making a move or having to leave a house because they can't afford it or they have to go help someone who's sick. Any number of things could be the case and you don't wanna pry into that personal business. It has no bearing on what they're gonna sell the house for or how much the house is actually worth and it's just not your business. Plus, if they have to answer you and lie, they're gonna feel bad about that. And if they tell you the truth, they're going to have to relive a pretty negative scenario. So either way, you just don't wanna go there and put those people in that position. So just keep it to yourself and move on with the transaction. So the fifth thing never to say is telling the listing agent or the seller that they're overpriced. Uh, the reason you wouldn't wanna do this is you wanna be the person who comes along watching diligently as they sit and rack up days on market and catch them when they're ready to price reduce or when they're ready to negotiate at a more realistic number. If you're the one who told them they're overpriced, they're gonna feel pretty negative about you and probably disagree because they wouldn't have led with that number if they either didn't want to or didn't have to. Be the person who watches the house as soon as they take a price reduction or as soon as they come uh, over a month or so on the market um, that can come in and, and try and start negotiating uh, softly and directly around the price thing. But if you face it head on, especially in the first couple weeks of them being on the market, it's probably going to set them off in a very negative way. And again, you don't want to bring that into your transaction. And that is the list, the five things not to say in this COVID market. Hopefully you got some value out of that. And if you do wanna take your education just a step further, um, I've put together a free resource, uh, which is the COVID era buyer's guide. You can download that for free down in the uh, description of the video uh, and hopefully take your education for this marketplace to just another level. Uh, if you got some value out of this, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because I am going to bring out weekly content just like this and you're not going to want to miss it. So without any further ado, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International and I'm signing off for now. See you on the next one.